Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Gary. I am the community manager here at BoxCast and today I'm gonna help you fine tune your live stream mix using your console. Let's get started. All right, so mixing again is one of those things that can be complicated and challenging especially when you've got a good mix going into your live stream, but it's a little dry. And what I mean by dry is that, well, it's it's more raw. It's It sounds like it's missing something, right? And that could be anything from like a compression or EQ, maybe it's some effects. So today I'm gonna show you just a few steps, a few things that'll help you get a little bit better with getting that live stream mix to be a little bit more lively, a little bit more with a little fizzle and sizzle and little pizzazz, okay? Um, primarily what we're gonna focus on is like how to get your effects into your live stream. And that's really only because if we did EQs and we did compressions and gates and all that stuff, we're really affecting the main house mix at that time. Um, but effects actually adds a little flavor to everything, it, it, it alleviates things, it brings things up to a different level. And so with effects, I'm gonna explain a few things that, that I do with our church and what we use and how we get it in there, but I'm also gonna show you how to do it in two ways. Um, we're, we've talked about how to actually set up a live stream mix through your mix bus on your digital console, and we've also talked about how to send it to your matrix on your digital console. So today I'm gonna show you both methods and how we're gonna put a little effects into our live stream. So let's go ahead and get that going. All right, so I've pretty much built everything already. I've got some things muted. We're using um, the DAW system here from Logic Pro. It's taking a virtual band into our X32. And so from this point, I've already got a, a mix started in our mains. So, so we're focused on the mains right this second um, because we're not gonna jump into the, the mix bus in, quite yet. But I've went ahead and I've already set up our effects. So if we go here to our console and we hit effects, you can see that we have three effects already in play. They're active, they're assigned. And generally those are the last four mix buses that are associated with your X32 or in some cases with any digital console, it's usually the last ones. Um, but here I've chosen a vintage room reverb, a hall reverb, and a rich plate reverb. The reason I've chosen these is because vintage room gives me a really nice full rounded sound and it helps with that effect level with the reverb on vocals. And that's important because I want them to sound a little more full, I want them to sound well-rounded, and I don't want them to sound like they're really distant, okay, really far away. A hall reverb is a little bit different. They call it a hall reverb because it's actually replicating the sound you would get by standing on a stage and playing or singing and you hear the reference coming back to you in a hall. So really open, really wide. And I like that more for my instruments, particularly for my acoustic guitars or anything acoustic, anything like percussion, that would be an acoustic system that's mic'd. And then I'm using a rich plate reverb to enhance our drums a little bit. And so with that, I'm using those to um, kind of build in the drums and give them a little more sizzle. So you'll hear it when you hit a cymbal or you hear a drum and you hear the, the sizzle at the end like that. That's usually giving us a little more a little more effect on the drum kit, which makes the drums sound a little more a full, but it also gives the drums quite a bit of personality, okay? And so that's the important thing. So we're gonna use those three, and I'm gonna show you from this point forward what we're gonna do with it. So I've got those set up in here. Um, in our mix buses that are controlling our effects, I've got those turned up, okay? And those are all ready to go, they're at zero. General rule of thumb here, when you're using effects, um, a little adds a lot. It's like adding salt to an, a meal or a, using an ingredient in overabundance. A little goes a long way, okay? So you kind of have to really play with it. And you have to remember that with live streaming systems, live streaming is very, very isolated. It's very sterile. Um, especially if you're doing left, right, and you're doing the stereo in, it's very sterile. So by adding too much effect, you're actually gonna diminish the sound quality and it won't sound as good. It may sound great in your house, but it's not gonna sound good on the live stream. So again, a little goes a long way here, all right? So in the mix bus systems, I've got those set to zero. Over here in our effects returns, I've got those turned up to zero as well. The reason being is that we are sending, we're gonna stay, we're gonna send a signal from the, the console, so let's say this vocal channel, we're gonna send it all the way over here into the vocal effects channel. We're gonna say, hey, I want you to mix this. And then we're telling the vocal mix here, the actual uh, effects for the vocals, to go from here back to here. And the reason we do that is because this is considered an input at this point. It's return. It's returning that vocal effect back. 
So as we return the vocal effect back, now this is getting sent into our mains, and then we can also adjust that to be sent into our live stream. All right, now you get the idea where it's going. Let's actually do it, okay? So we're gonna go in here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute um, everything but uh, let's, let's go ahead and focus on our vocals because this is where you're going to hear the changes quite a bit. I'm going to bring these down so that way what you hear is going to be the only thing. And I'm going to jump into our live stream as well because that's where you're going to hear the majority of everything. All right. So I'll go ahead and play our virtual band. And they're getting ready to start up and kick in. And so you should be hearing... You should be hearing some like ambient noise. This is from the microphone that the, the singer was using, the vocalist was using. You're hearing the, the drums, the acoustics. And then here's her voice. They said unto me, Let us so it's, it's kind of dry. It sounds exactly as if she was singing in the microphone. There's no effects, there's no level. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the effects. So I'm gonna go in here and I created a DCA to help with this um, and I have gone into this effects systems here, and I'm turning these off so you can see how we'll do it. But there's nothing going in in this effects channel right now, because this is a mix bus. We're creating a custom mix into that, okay? So inside of this, bring her voice down just a little bit for us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get this added in properly. So we're going to go into the mix bus that we had set up for the vocal effects. We're going to add vocal effects to her vocals right now. You won't hear it yet because we actually haven't made it move. Right now we're sending this to the mixing um, effects right here. Now we have to send it back, okay? And so that's the important part. So by doing that, we're going to go back into our effects return and it's turned up and we see a signal coming in. So now we send it back. Now let's put it into our mix, which means now we're going to take our DCA here. We're going to turn this up. So we'll jump back into our live stream. And now we're going to go ahead and add in that effect. Okay. So we've added this as a return into our effects. So now it's being routed back into the mix bus, and that's what you're hearing. And because we're sending this as an output out to our live stream, you're now hearing the actual reverb in her vocals. So the way that we can control this is by always changing the amount of effects levels that we're sending into the effects mix bus. So if I kill it, it's completely out. So now I can just add it. And this is where we can add little bits of that flavor. Okay, so now we have a good level. Let's go ahead and just add the other vocalists in their, their effects, okay? So we've added the effects in. Now let's jump back to our mix bus channel for our live stream and let's bring them into the mix. Okay, so now if we actually go ahead and mute this effects channel, you'll hear the difference. So here it is with it off. And here it is with it on. Okay, so again, mixing your sub mix for your live stream takes a little practice. It does take an extra person, but just learning to hear what you're putting into the system and what how much of that effect you're putting in will change everything. So now what we'll do here is we'll do the exact same thing and we'll go into the drum kit and I'll show you how we do that with the drums too. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and mute our, our full channels here for our vocals. We'll unmute our drums, which you should be hearing now. Okay, and let's focus specifically on um, the snare and the toms because those are really where we get a lot of a lot of our good flavor. I'm gonna mute those kick drums. Um, I'm gonna mute the hi-hat and the overheads and we'll focus on the toms and the snares here. So as you hear the snap of the snare, we'll go in and we'll add the drums in. So we've got the kick and the snare and we've got all of our other drums including our toms. We've got some of them into the reverb here, into the effects, okay? Now we'll go back to our effects return on our live stream mix bus. We'll go to effects return and we'll bring in, now see we're getting signal, so now we'll bring in our drums. 
you should be hearing that change. And now let me rewind the, uh... here we go. So if I mute our, if I mute the toms, you should hear just the snare drum. I'll unmute the toms and you can hear the, the thump of them. So I'm going to go ahead and mute the drum effects and now you'll hear the difference. You see here how it got flat? It went flat on us, just sounds normal. So let's unmute those drum effects. So it adds a lot to it, right? It brings that up, it elevates it. It makes it sound like you're in a hall or in a concert room or you're at the event. And that's the key here. By adding just a little bit of effects, we can change how all of those things work, okay? So now that you have that, I wanna caution you with using effects on like cymbals, um, especially with like hi-hats, rides, crashes, because adding too much effect into those will make them sound really loud. Um, they'll also diminish the amount of flexibility you have with mixing it. So adding more reverb doesn't mean adding anything great. It just means ele elevating that, that actual sound, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll mute our drum kit now, all right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to our acoustic guitar here. So you should be hearing bass and everything in because it's in the same mute group. I'm gonna go ahead and mute the bass. We'll just stick with the guitar, okay? So now let's jump into our mix bus for our instrument and you can see that we've got it added here, okay? So we've got our guitar added into our mix bus for our instruments. We're gonna go back to our live streaming mix bus here and we're gonna hit effects return and now we're gonna bring the effects up. And now you should hear the reverb. So again, if I mute that actual effect, here it is dry. Here it is with effect very subtle, but what it does is it changes the dynamic of that guitar. So now, if we were to take this entire mix, okay, if we were to take this entire mix as it sits, let's add everything in together, and you'll hear the differences between all of the effects and no effects at all. So here it is with the effects. Here it is with no effects. Here it is with effects. So as you can see, by just adding a little bit of our reverbs and adding a, to each one of our instruments or our vocals, we're actually taking the flavor of that mix that we're creating for our live stream and we're just elevating it a little bit. We're adding a little extra to it, okay? So here's some key things that I'd like you to know just to keep in mind as some reminders. Um, as you're doing this, all right? Using a secondary mixing system, such as an iPad or an extra computer, especially with the digital console, is paramount here, especially for the live stream. It's easier for somebody else to do it, so always having an extra person available will help with that, and it brings a whole lot of different aspects to live streaming and audio. Again, less is more. Remember, you just wanna add a pinch of salt. A little salt bay to add a little salt to your mix is great, especially with the FX. So make sure you're doing less is more. The, the more you add, the more complicated it'll get and the, the worse that sound could become. So make sure you're just adding a little bit by little bit until it gets a really nice, smooth, consistent sound. And of course, gain structure. We always talk about gain structure here. Gain structure is very important. You wouldn't have proper gain structure in the console. You won't have proper effects going into your system, okay? Now, I would also like to encourage you, don't be afraid to experiment. Learn the differences between what a chorus delay is, what a plate reverb is, what a hall reverb is, all right? And use them to your benefit. There are plenty of resources out there to help with that, and I hope that you can uh, start adding a little bit to your live stream mixing as you go. So remember, if you have any questions or any comments, please drop them in the, in the comment section in the question sections below. And as always, happy streaming.